Welcome back to the Plays With Cars YouTube channel and another episode of Miniatures Mondays. Today we are talking slot cars, but not our usual HO scale, you know, 187th to Hot Wheels size ones uh, that we featured a number of times here on the channel. We are doing 132nd scale slot cars, specifically scale extracts. Um, they basically invented slot cars or made them really popular uh, over in the UK um, and then Europe larger. And this scale has been kind of undergoing a resurgence along with Scale Electrics uh, for the last quite a few years now as they've added a bunch of features and really come out with this great line of out-of-the-box cars. You can see the detail on this. This is the Ford GT, uh, the new modern Le Mans Racer one, and it is fantastic. There's even full interior detail, driver, all the little antennas. Uh, the splitter, the dive planes, like it has it all. Um, and I think it was like 35 or 40 bucks out of the box and um, full retail. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, that means like this thing is collector quality, like what you would get for a die cast at half the price. And you can drive it, you know. Uh, so they're getting really popular. And you can see the chassis is a little simplified. The, the really fast 132nd stuff has like a brass chassis and a sidewinder motor. And you can like adjust all these things. Um, these are more for of out of the, for out of the box racing. But they're really popular for it. And they're actually quite good. Uh, they really are. I've lapped this one for, I don't know, uh, probably about an hour or so uh, up in Tacoma at a track up there. And it was just a super fun car to drive. And... You know, you dial in your controller, you know, how strong you want the braking force to be and how quick you want the acceleration ramped up and, and tune your driving style from there. And the car just responds great to whatever inputs you give it on there. So it has been super fun to race. And so I picked a couple of these up to actually race. And this is one of them. Um, you guys know I'm a, I'm a big Ford GT fan of all generations. Um, but especially the, the new modern uh, EcoBoost one in racing form because... Uh, the paint scheme, obviously, red, white, and blue, but not just that. The very specific paint scheme emulates my favorite Javelin, the 1971 Trans Am Championship version of Mark Donahue and Penske Racing. And the reason for that is not uh, inconsequential. Basically, this is done on purpose. The team that prepped the Le Mans cars for Ford... Um, is uh, Chip Ganassi, is it Chip Ganassi, no, yeah, I think it's Chip Ganassi, anyways, it's the team that did it, all of their race cars are red, white, and blue, and they've always been riffs on the AMC paint schemes, and that's because the guy that founded the race team is a huge AMC fan, um, like that's where he, he got his thing, in fact, I think it was actually on this team that won that championship, um, so there's definitely reasons these paint schemes are done like this. Uh, but it's done really well. This is a really cool take on it. I really enjoy it, but I also just love the car itself, too, um, and that kind of things. But, yeah, so I race that. Obviously, I, I've got the Javelin here, too, and you can see it's also got the full interior and really nice taillight details and the right mini lights and the huge spoiler on the front. Um, and then I've also got the uh, 72 Championship version. This is... Um, Come on, you. The George Falmer one. So it was the number one and the number two car ran in 72, and they won the championship again. So that was two years on the trot. So we got those. They've got two other championship, or uh, two other Trans Am Javelins. Uh, there's the 75 championship car, which is yellow and black. And then there's this blue and yellow, uh, like, fighting Iowa racing team or something like that that's kind of wild. And I haven't quite picked those up yet. But I did get the two um, red, white, and blue ones. I had to have those. And like I said, of course, I got the, the GT. But I also got this classic GT40 Mark IV uh, also to run with. So the, the Javelins do pretty good out of the box. But Scale Electrics actually changed their chassis design. Um, and these are two of the cars uh, that, that kind of started the, the new chassis design. And so this thing just looked so sweet, and being the new chassis design and vintage uh, Can-Am and Le Mans racing bodies are super popular at the ch particular track that's close by me. That's like, okay, I need what I can race. This is the one to get. Uh, so I picked this one up too. Uh, so that's what I have as far as cars that actually run and go. Um, 
So the Javelins are kind of shelf queens. These two are supposed to get raced. This one I haven't actually run yet. This one I've run once. Uh, but I'm hoping to make it down there now that it's winter time and the real racing has uh, subsided for the season. We have an off season of six months of no racing. I'm hoping to get some racing done with the slot cars and make it up to Tacoma a couple of times over the winter. I also have this guy. This is not a Skeletrix. This is a Hornby, which is another uh, UK um, brand. And you can see it is not nearly as nice, detailed, or fast. It's got this funky gear train set up right next to the tire. And then the, the nose of the motor, like... Um, impedes on what size tire you can run and then the chassis is like half molded as the body uh, so you can't even really like take this body off and use it with a different chassis because you'd end up missing half of it unless you broke it off and you can see this one's missing the front spoiler and missing the rear bumper I actually found this uh, at a Goodwill for like 25 cents and I'm like yeah for 25 cents I'll put a, a Trans Am Camaro up on the, the shelf next to the Javelin so that's what this thing is, is it's a uh, it's basically a shelf fodder. Oh, yeah, it's like even smashed here in the front that I didn't even realize. This thing's led a hard life, but you can see, like, this one did not hold up very well to the rigors of being a slot car. Um, wow, windows cracked and everything. Um, so you definitely kind of, you want to watch out. You want to stay away from the, these other these other brands and just get rid of that guy there. And, uh, and stick with the Skeletrics. They've really got it dialed in nicely these days. And if you're looking into doing some slot car racing and you're not entirely on board with HO scale or there's not an HO scale track close to you, um, definitely check out the 32nd. There's a lot more of these tracks running commercially still these days than HO, as much as that pains me to say. Um, so you can usually find one of these pretty close by and figure out what's popular to run in your area. Um, like I said, in, in mine, Tacoma, um, which is about an hour drive north of me, uh, is the nearest track, and they run vintage Le Mans, modern Le Mans, and vintage Trans Am cars. Like, that's what they run. Um, so these are all perfect for that. And there's a, you know, maybe a little bit of some of the other cars and stuff too, but, but this is what's popular near me. Uh, but definitely, you know, go check out your local track, see what they got. Um, take some laps there's always rental cars available and stuff that's what happened to us is we stopped in just to look at the place and i had had these already just on the shelf and i'd seen this one sitting there and it was uh, free track time if you bought a car and i was like well this one could look cool on the shelf next to the other ones bought the car did some track time and ah crap bought some more cars you know how it goes so anyways uh that's been 132nd scale slot cars here on miniatures monday and um, I hope to bring you a field trip uh, later this year back up to Tacoma where we'll go race this thing and put some laps on it. So until next time, this has been Plays With Cars.